We're looking now at the Parthenon metopes. And in comparison to Olympia, where there were only 12 sculpted metopes on that temple, there were 92 on the Parthenon as a whole. So incredibly impressive. And there were four different subject matters in total, but each of them came together to have a, a common theme. So we study the Centauromachy theme from the south side, and they happened to be the best preserved because they were on the least accessible side of the temple. But on the other sides, we had a Gigantomachy, an Amazonomachy, and then scenes from the Trojan War. So as you can see, each one of those scenes are scenes of conflict, which of course fits with Athene as patron goddess of the temple. Of course, Athene is goddess of war. But also, again, we've got that theme that we've seen in other artwork of Greeks fighting foreigners and trying to show their supremacy over others. So for example, once more, the centaurs are going to stand in as a metaphor for the Persians. However, the giants, Amazons and Trojans may also be representative of groups the Greeks saw as dangerous, brutes, foreigners and women. Now of the 92, we will study three together. So don't worry, you don't, don't have to study the, the full set. And what we're going to notice is that there's a big difference in terms of quality and how well they manage to fit the shape and space available, which is the word composition. That's what that means. And of course, this is to be expected, really. It was such a huge undertaking to have as much sculpture as the Parthenon did completed in a short space of time. So of course, they had to have lots and lots of people working on it at the same time and of course some will be better than others so we'll, we'll look at some as I say that that are better quality so to start with this is Metope 26 and in terms of its success, obviously we can see there some really good anatomy. So the sculptor clearly has a, an idea of how to sculpt muscle, bone, we can see rib cage there, and flesh in general. But when it comes to actually filling the space, they've not done a particularly good job. There are some huge spaces unfilled. So the corners, for example, especially that top right corner. Also, the space in the bottom middle underneath the legs of the centaur and the lapith. If we also have a look at the drapery that appears to be behind the lapith there, and we can see the shaded bit just under his raised arm suggests there was also drapery folds there originally. It just appears to be magically floating in the background uh, and it is a little bit unrealistic in terms of its function overall. We've also got some issues with proportion too. So if you have a look at the centaur, rather small in terms of the, the horse part, the proportions there don't look kind of consistent with what you would expect from a horse, but also there's no neck to this centaur. It goes straight from the shoulders into the head, suggesting perhaps there's been a miscalculation in terms of trying to fit in the, uh, the top part of the sculpture. The next one we're going to have a look at, Metope number 27, which if you've read Susan Woodford's Introduction to Greek Art, she states is her favourite Metope. And you know what, you can see why. In terms of filling that space, it does a fantastic job. Having crossing diagonals not only uh, brings across that sense of conflict that we've also seen done with Heracles and the Cretan bull at Olympia, but also the west pediment of the Parthenon. But it manages to get the sculpture or the narrative into each of the four corners of the metope, which, which I've said previously, are the hardest parts of that uh, shape to fill. We also get this beautiful drapery in the background, which not only again fills some of the backdrop, but adds pattern to the narrative as well. So we've got those really lovely catenary or U-shaped folds. On top of that, the sculptor as well has managed to create variety in the scene with the triangular shapes that you can see caused by, for example, the legs of the lapiths, also the arm of the centaur behind his back, and also that um, front hoof of the centaur as well. So there's an awful lot going on in this scene, as well as the very well sculpted anatomy of, of the lapith himself. And just notice again, the lapith 
is in front in terms of the crossing diagonals, showing the superiority of that figure who most commonly in art represents the Greek. Finally, we've got Metope 28. Now, this one has got an altogether very different feel. And the reason for that is that the lapith is vulnerable in this scene, which is something very unusual we haven't seen before. But it does add a sense of pathos, a sense of realism overall. So the lapith at the bottom um, lies lifeless. But look at the way the head has kind of lolled or fallen back. So it's incredibly emotive, incredibly realistic. In contrast, we've got the centaur rearing up, which you know has kind of two purposes, I suppose. It generates that action of the scene, but it also, again, helps fill the space, especially moving into the top corner. But what is most interesting about this scene is what is draped over the arm of the centaur. And again, filling the space quite nicely in the background, but also um, acting as a bit of a metaphor again or a reminder that the centaurs are meant to be seen as the other, the foreigners, because this is a quite often identified as a, as a panther skin. And we've got there that idea, therefore, of the non-Greek animal, the exotic animal being associated with the centaurs. So it's just a nice interesting one this one to contrast with the other two because we do have that very very different feel where this time it's not the Greek who's actually winning. So just to conclude, a reminder that we have now seen this Centauromachy theme in three different places. We saw it on the west pediment of the Temple of Zeus at Olympia. We saw it on the Bassi Frieze and we've now seen it on the Parthenon Metopes. So it's something that was very, very important to the Greeks, very, very popular. And if you need a reminder of the, the story, the mythology associated with the Centauromachy and the wedding of Perithous, king of the Lapiths, then have a look again at that video from the Temple of Zeus at Olymp Olympia West Pediment just to, to go over those key details again of how all of this came to be.